Hello again and welcome to Dan White Books, the book review channel where we add insights into the worlds of literature, both for those who do read and those who don't. It's been a while since I reviewed a non-fiction work, so I'm happy today to talk of a book not long released by the mighty David Attenborough, and that being A Life on Our Planet. Now, you may or may not know, but I'm from the UK, specifically the southwest, where rain and sunshine like to pop in and out like a child from behind a curtain. That is to say, it's sunny one minute and suddenly raining the next. I don't know how famous David Attenborough is around the world, but here in the UK, he's one of the most well-known and recognisable presenters, specifically for his narration on wildlife documentaries. Some of them you may have seen, like Blue Planet, Life on Earth, Planet Earth and many, many more. He is one of the most recognisable and distinguished voices. There is a part of me that does want to do an impression, but I won't. I was very close there. As you are aware, climate change is a massive issue currently. The reason I bought this book is because in the back of my mind I was always asking, well, how much of an issue? Is it overstated? Well, no, it is not. My ignorance towards this topic could only last for so long, and it's something I've been meaning to research for some time, with people around me changing to plant-based diets and no doubt other famous figureheads campaigning for a greener earth. It was time for me to read from a man who has been on this planet for a considerable time. For context, David Attenborough is 94. I could think of no other fitting introduction to what is a growing calamity. But is it any good? Well, let's find out. This book starts with a series of dates where global events relating to wildlife and the environment are discussed along with individual tales in David Attenborough's life. These dates start at 1937 and go on to the end of the 21st century. Despite some stories from the life of the author, this is not an autobiography. It is an educational book and, as the title suggests, a witness statement on the current course our planet is on, along with ways in which we can live sustainably in the future and avoid disaster. As the dates progress, you start to notice the rise in the world's population, the rise of carbon in the atmosphere, and the most shocking to me at least, the constant decline of the world's remaining wilderness. The figure starts at 67% in 1937 and ends on 35% in 2020. That fact alone is certainly eye-opening and such features are constant in this work. It does not bash your own way of living personally but instead gives you facts on the ever-constant damage that majority lifestyles are having on the planet and on how our pursuit of growth across all market economies is simply no longer sustainable with the current resources we have left. It shows how even the smallest things we do have such a great impact on the ecosystems around us. Attenborough talks of the harmonious balance between nature and the importance of biodiversity. This term is used to describe all life on Earth and measures the vast number of species and ecosystems. All of this in balance contributes to our very survival, the air we breathe, the food we eat, and on other animal survival just the same. Attenborough's main focus in this book is on our influence, how Homo sapiens are disrupting biodiversity to catastrophic levels. With less species on the planet, the balance is tilted, and so the world's ecosystems begin to collapse, one after the other, like a mass tower of Jenga blocks. It's not all doom and gloom, but the start of this book paints a very stark message, and that is on the sheer dominance and dominion we hold on this world and on how that power is severely affecting life globally. Our deforestation for farmland and agriculture, our use of fossil fuels and our overconsumption of aquatic wildlife. Each disruption leads to a greater consequence and further disrupts the balance that has allowed us to live and prosper in the first place. As the dates go on, resources run out, land runs out, and the consequences of such are no doubt evident. Species die and ours is not immune. Then we have the second half, which serves to address the issues raised in the first. It offers practical and scientific-based ideas on how we as a species can move forward and look to restore biodiversity across the planet, as well as lower our emissions and take carbon back out of the atmosphere 
through, in some cases, the very means of nature. It may be obvious to others, but this book taught me how even small actions have a knock-on effect across the globe. It's informed me on a much bigger picture. Cutting down rainforests, for example, not only takes out trees that release oxygen and absorb CO2, it releases further CO2 in the energy used to remove them, and if burning them, then releases the carbon they have stored for centuries. This new harvested land results in complete ecosystems being removed. These can be incredibly complex if we're talking about the deforestation of the Amazon rainforest. The species gone may have had all manner of genetics and traits beneficial to humanity and the greater world around them. But they are wiped out. Much like an alien race from a Hollywood film, we show little remorse. The worst part is that there are no heroes in this tale. We pave the way for further agriculture to meet the increasing demands of an ever-rising population, and we continue to strive for growth. This book has taught me that it can keep going. We need to think differently. We need to, as stated in this work, we need to mature. Because if we don't, we do walk towards ruin, and the science is abundantly clear. There's a lot more to discuss in this book. If you're clued up on environmentalism already, the first half may not offer anything new to you. If, like me, you've been burying your head in the sand, I very much implore you to read this book. It is relatively short and written in a very digestible manner and will make you realise that giving up meat, recycling plastic and conserving energy has far more to do with just climate change or morals. It has a startling effect on all life across the planet and has already had such a big effect already. So of all things considered, I would rate this book a 90 out of 100 and would certainly recommend you read it. I haven't mentioned, but it also has some beautiful glossed pictures in the middle. And hey, pictures, even, even readers like them from time to time. It comes with a nice yellow bookmark attached as well, which, um, well, you can't really fault that. I absolutely really appreciate when a book comes with a bookmark. So I would certainly check this out if you are interested in this topic. I think it's very important um, just to get a basic understanding of it at least. I'll certainly be reading some more books. And it's been very fun to review another non-fiction book. I've not done that in a long time. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope I've given you just a taste of this book. Of course, there are over 200 pages, so I would not be able to summarize all of it. I would certainly recommend that you do pick this up. I thank you very much again for watching another book review. I will see you here again soon for another book review. I thank you very much for watching. I've already said that, haven't I? <laughs> I will see you again soon, my friends. Bye-bye.